Hi, and welcome to Unleashed, the podcast about the people, the projects, and the culture of Big Red Dog. Each episode, we sit down with a team member to discuss what they're doing on a daily basis to chase their passions, help our clients become successful, and make the engineering business cool. I'm Sean Terry Smith, your co-host, along with Kelly Dakin. Kelly, it's good to see you in person today. We're, we're all three of us in the same room today with our guests. Good to see you too, man. I'm excited to be here uh, with you and to be here in, in our Sugarland office, finally. Yeah, it's my first visit to the Sugarland office, even though I'm in Houston. We, we, Houston's a very big city, so we uh, don't get around as often as we probably should, but it, uh, it's nice to be recording here for the first time. Let's go. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Unleashed. Uh, as we mentioned, we're in our Sugarland office today. Uh, it's my first visit. I think it's uh, Kelly's first visit, actually, too. So it's a bit brand new, but we're here with uh, Bailey Collins, who's one of our graduate engineers with our structural teaming. How are you doing, Bailey? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing good. great. So uh, you're, you're a fairly new addition. Actually, I mean, everybody in the Sugarland office is a fairly new addition to the Big Red Dog family. Uh, we uh, picked up the Sugarland office at the beginning of this year. And uh, we have a team of approximately seven, eight folks or so. Yeah, down here. Think, yeah, that's about right. So all all structural uh, engineering services down here, and um, you know, you just recently joined over the summer. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, in April. In April, so you know, f- fairly fresh faces around here, and uh, it seems that everybody's kind of uh, become accustomed to the culture of Big Red Dog, and definitely has uh, you know definitely embraced it fully. So. The new office looks great down here. I think you guys are located centrally in Sugarland, and it's a lot of stuff to do around here. So I'm a little jealous. <laughs> this is a, it's a great spot. There's like so much to do. You look out the window. There's bars and restaurants and all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, the only bad thing is my Starbucks. Um, you know, spending has increased oh, sure. <laughs> significantly. So. Yeah, you're, you're just right down the uh, it's just downstairs from from you. So I can imagine. Yeah, we're we're, we're in the same boat in the Houston office. But uh, you see, so you just. Uh, Came from uh, another firm previously, and, and you studied uh, up in, in Dallas, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I did my undergrad and graduate um, at Southern Methodist University. They had an accelerated program, so I just kind of went through six years and knocked it out. <laughs> oh, got, wow. got it all done, all done at once. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not sure I would have been able to go back and get it <laughs> after. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, I can imagine having to break it up into undergrad and graduate for uh, for studying. That I, I can imagine that'd be pretty tough. So. Um, it's, it's, a definitely a, a benefit for folks in the structural side of things where, you know, we typically expect that structural engineers will have to have a graduate or, or some sort of, um, you know, post back sort of studies to supplement, um, their careers. So when you get into graduate studies, uh, assuming most of the folks that might be listening are familiar, at least with undergraduate, what sort of things do you take on the graduate side of things to help you specialize in structural engineering beyond, uh, beyond your bachelor's studies? Yeah, definitely. Um, so you, uh, well, I took advanced concrete design, mm-hmm. advanced steel design, um, and then uh, some kind of cool electives like earthquake engineering. And um, I also took uh, finite element, element method. Mm-hmm. So just kind of help out with the software that we, we use in the office. Nice. Nice. So you get a chance to get into the uh, study or the basically the software, the, the modeling software that you guys have to do to use on a daily basis here to, uh, produce the, the structural engineering design. So if you, at one point during your, your undergraduate career, did you decide that, uh, I am going to go through this accelerated pa- uh, path and get through your six years and get your graduate degree? What, at what point did you decide I'm going to do this to structural engineering? Um, well, in civil undergrad, uh, we got to take transportation courses, so, you know, the basic civil courses, structural. Um, and that's when I started realizing that I liked the structural courses the most. And um, it's kind of standard for structural to have a master's degree. Mm-hmm. So I knew if I wanted to go into that, that I would have to get my master's. So uh, within the first couple of years, I knew I was going to just go ahead and, and go get my master's. So cool. Nice. Plus SMU is such a beautiful campus. Campus, You're probably like, oh, I'll just stay here for a couple more years. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it is definitely a beautiful campus. Our, I think our Dallas office just moved maybe a few blocks away yeah. from Yeah, from we've SMU. been up, up near SMU and then we just moved um, this year to another office. It's still near SMU, but... Yeah, it's just maybe a five minute road, you know, right. you get off the exit. And, Which is great because, you know, with a college campus comes a lot of uh, great restaurants and stuff around there. Oh, too. Sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, a lot of great internship opportunities too. If you're, you know, you can work and, you know, uh, conduct a, an internship while you're going to school at the mm-hmm. same time. Which, you know, being in Houston with UH folks and in other universities here with Rice and and whatnot, you know, you have an opportunity to go to school and work during the fall and the spring, which is always a very strong uh, opportunity for sure. 
And I do want to point out that you, you being from SMU, me being from UH, and Kelly being a UCF alum, we all have American Athletic Conference oh, teams right. in the didn't realize that. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> so a lot, maybe a lot of uh, football history to, to cover at some point. But uh, well, anyway, uh, have you ever considered going back to Dallas? What drew you to Houston uh, originally? Yeah, sure. Um, I was born and uh, lived in Houston most of my life. I, I actually got to live overseas for a couple years there. So, But my family's here and uh, just it's kind of home to me. So mm -hmm. after six years in Dallas, which I loved, it was awesome. Uh, just ready to come back. Sure. Where'd you go overseas? Were you studying overseas, working overseas, or just living prior to, prior to college? Um, I lived in Africa for two years and then the Middle East for about six years. Oh, we're in the Middle East or in Africa for that matter too. Which countries were you at? In Africa, I was in Eritrea and mm -hmm. then um, in the Middle East, I was in Qatar. So actually fun fact, uh, when I had to apply to colleges, I had to apply as an international student because all <laughs> four years of high school, I was, I was overseas. So, oh, wow. so your transcripts are all from, from Qatar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's an incredible opportunity if you're, you know, as a high school student or, or and before that to, to experience all those different cultures and. I assume were your parents involved in oil and gas or foreign affairs or something to that effect? Or Yeah, it was oil and gas. Oil and gas. Okay. That, that's a pretty common experience for Houston <laughs> yeah. people. So uh, that's pretty interesting. I, 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 I've known some folks who've gone through Qatar before and just the, the, the architecture, the structural engineering or the structures there seem remarkable, you know, relative to the fact that they're right on the edge of a desert, and, you know, right, <laughs> yeah. on the, right on the edge of the water. It's a very striking uh, contrast for sure to see that level of civilization pop up right on the edge there at the, at the, at the, at the Gulf. So, um, so it, at one point, um, you know, did you always want to go to SMU? Was that something that, you know, you know, was something that you had uh, dreamed of doing going back to Houston or sorry, coming back to Texas and going to school at SMU? No, actually, um, I really wanted to go to California and become a surfer. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah, really. A lot of money and, there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, my mom wanted me to look at just one Texas school. So, um, I picked SMU and I fell in love with the campus when I went. Um, and that was that Nice. <laughs> only school I applied to. So, well, well good. You knocked yeah. it out of the park. So you seem to be, you know, right in, right in alignment with what you want to do. It's for sure. So, uh, going into, you know, what your, your day to day is like, um, we obviously work on a wide variety of structures, a lot of different product uh, projects rather. Uh, I think if I'm correct, we, we tend to have a, a larger amount of multifamily jobs perhaps, but uh, in terms of, you know, the, the scope of work that you guys work on, you do timber, you do concrete, steel, the whole, the whole nine yards, I'm assuming. Can you guys go over what uh, sort of construction you typically work on? What type of projects you guys typically work on? Yeah, definitely. Um, we definitely do, um, you know, wood design, concrete, steel, kind of a little bit of everything. Um, mostly right now I'm working on, uh, residential. So, you know, the apartment complexes you see popping up everywhere. <laughs> um, so it's a lot of, uh, of that kind of work. Sure. A lot goes into that. I, I, when I was a, at school, I did an internship with a structural firm and it was predominantly multifamily and, um, you know, having my class, I think I had the opposite experience from you. I think I took a couple of structural classes and realized I didn't want to do structural <laughs> yeah. engineering. I enjoyed the dirt and the uh, hydraulics and hydrology a bit more, uh, myself, but, uh, I learned very fast that, that, uh, that, that wasn't, uh, my, my strong suit. So, uh, but the, it's remarkable how, um, you know, how much detail and how much design goes into designing, you know, a multifamily development where, you know, it's three or four stories often, perhaps if it's a garden style or a wrap or whatever, you have a, a small mid rise to low rise structure and the amount of design calculation that goes into it. It's, it's just a very, there's a lot of data points. It's very interesting to see how that all ties in together and, and how you spec out, every, you know, each individual lateral load, you know, vertical load, et cetera. So, um, I, I'm pretty impressed how, you know, how many buildings go up, you know, how much effort goes into designing each and every one of those for sure. Do you have a specific uh, preference to what, what is your favorite material to work with and design? Um, I have the most experience in steel. So I guess I would say steel for right now. Sure. But uh, <laughs> I would say steel was my, my favorite class, at least <laughs> out of concrete, yeah. you know, it, versus uh, concrete. I, I, I think steel made the most sense to me. I, it, I think the, uh, the AISC manual is very intimidating. It looks like a Bible, <laughs> um, but the uh, it's, it, it's probably the most easiest to use uh, in terms of just, referencing design values and everything. Do you, I guess you guys ref, regularly use those documentations at the you know, on a daily basis for steel design, concrete design, you have ACI manual and whatnot. Can you go over what, what sort of references you guys usually use to 
help you with the design? Yeah, definitely. Um, every day we're definitely using those every day. I have that. I keep that on my desk every single day. So, um, we, we have the IBC international building code, um, ACI American concrete Institute. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, AISC, which is what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The big, the Bible of (laughs) steel, basically steel Bible. Yeah. (laughs) It's just page after page, a very, very light paper too. It's just, it's just like they intended it for it to be (laughs) as close to the Bible as possible because you have to follow these designs. It's just tables after tables of various steel geometries and, and, uh, the, the, the loading capacities and whatnot. I'm probably, uh, way off point for some of that because I can't remember my steel class as well as probably you guys are, I'm sure you do, but, um, I'm, I'm impressed at least when it comes to the, the amount of effort, the amount of design that goes into, um, you know, st- structural engineering from the civil side. It's, uh, there's a lot of things that go in to making a project successful. Uh, the engineering, it, there's a lot of small engineering pieces that go together, whereas the structural is a lot of depth to it. Like you have, you have a very, a lot of depth of engineering design and analysis where civil is kind of broad. There's a lot of different things you have to design at the same time, but it perhaps isn't as complicated or complex perhaps, um, on each individual item. So, so you talked a little bit about, um, you're working on on a lot of building projects now. Um, have you worked on any different types of structures in your past, uh, stops, so to speak, your previous companies, perhaps different industries? Um, yeah. Um, before this, I was doing a lot of work in, uh, the education, um, part, uh, mostly in Houston, um, and before that I was working in oil and gas a little bit, so okay. <laughs> kind of all over. So then in oil and gas, or what kind of things are you, you designing? Um, I wasn't actually designing. Um, I was going offshore, um, onto oil rigs and, uh, kind of supervising installations out there okay. onto the existing structure. So. so like construction management basically. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's your, your, your cup of tea. I mean, it's much large, largely what your background uh, kind of yeah. led itself towards. So for sure. I think that's in a previous life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Before your marketing <laughs> life, you know, yes. uh, helping the construction administration. That's, that's huge. I mean, a lot of engineers don't get that experience to, to, to see where the rubber meets, rubber meets the road as it were, um, especially on the civil side too. I mean, I guess even, I mean, especially on the structural and MEP side, I think you miss a lot of opportunities. I mean, your SE goes out there and checks the rebar and you know, has two or three visits scheduled for each site, but like, as an EIT or as a graduate engineer uh, or designer for that matter, you know, we don't see uh, a lot of opportunities to go out and see the site and, and check out how they're constructing things on the civil side. We, we get a fair amount of opportunity, but you know, it's still at the end of the day, having that construction real world knowledge makes a lot of sense. Yeah, It's oh, so, yeah. it's so important to get out there and kind of understand how everything goes together. It just helps you become a better designer or engineer. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, definitely. It has definitely helped me, you know, actually picture what I, what I'm designing here in the office. And if there's going to be an issue in the field, um, obviously it's uh, easier to find if you go out and see them yeah. <laughs> yourself. So there are never issues in the field. Yeah, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> there's a huge complex design with, you know, multiple people trying to get their uh, components into a structure. It, it, it's, it's remarkable for, for, for civil. We don't have to worry too much uh, about, other consultants often, if it's not, if it's, if it's outside of the building, but when you get inside the building, there's just so much stuff at play. So I guess we can segue into software and modeling it with Revit and things like that. How does that change, you know, how you guys design with uh, the architects, with the MEP teams and any other uh, consultants that might be on the job? How does it typically work uh, on the back end for you guys to design? Yeah, definitely. Um, I love Revit. It's 3D yeah. <laughs> as opposed to AutoCAD. Um, so it, it really helps to kind of visualize um, everything that's going on. And you can see, you know, where MEP is putting all the piping and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely very helpful in the design, the design aspect of it. Yeah, it saves a lot of headaches, I imagine, in the construction side of things when you go in implementation. So everybody has the exact holes that need cut in the concrete. And <laughs> there's no uh, beams or Joyce in the way of, of, uh, HVAC equipment or something like that, that, that to me, that's just, uh, a, a very, a very well orchestrated machine that, um, we don't typically get typically see on the civil side since we're kind of running our, we're executing, you know, the executive management, uh, consultant for most of the civil and the site side. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very interesting to see how that is orchestrated on the, on the structure side for sure. So I guess going into that a uh, little more deeper, you work pretty closely with uh, our designers and, you know, and, and, and I think in today's industry with structural engineering, we see that designers, um, you know, previous folks that we might refer to as drafters or, you know, folks who are doing the drawings, they have taken, taken an, ex- a, 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 an increased role in terms of the active designing that goes into a project. Whereas before they may have taken, you know, a list of 
of calculations or design uh, annotations from the engineer and drawing it up. Now they are actually in the model designing a great deal of the structure themselves with, you know, being overseen by a, an engineer, of course, but there's so much that they do on a daily basis now to make sure that the project is um, done quicker, done uh, more effectively and more efficiently at the same time. So how, how does it, how is it working with a designer and in, in working hand in hand with somebody who's uh, every day in that model, every day in Revit and, and designing these out for you? Yeah, definitely. It's a, definitely a, you know, a team effort. Um, so working with them is, is always fun. Um, they're, they're very smart and, uh, you can ask a lot of questions. They know yeah. a lot. So, oh, sure. um, working with them, you know, they really help get everything set up for us so that things can just move a little bit quicker. Um, so it's, it's really helpful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that, that's, uh, actually my, my father's background and lends that to it. He, he's been a structural designer since I was a kid and was a drafter before that. And, um, the, the fact that, you know, like the, the things that he could design is on the level of a structural engineer, just simply because of the, the amount of work that they do now in, in 3d space and the amount of work that they do in Revit and, and, uh, how much they contribute to the end product is pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, yeah, sure. definitely. So going, um, into, uh, the, the, the recruiting side of things, um, you recently joined us at the University of Houston for the career fair, and I know that you're responsible for much of the intern program here in the Sugarland office for structural. Um, I, I think a lot of students who get into civil engineering think they want to do structural and may not necessarily realize they perhaps need further education past their bachelor's program. So I think that tends to stop folks from pursuing perhaps structural engineering, but those who do want to continue on um, often start, start you know, seek out structural engineering internships in their undergraduate and graduate programs. Could you go over what we tend to look for in terms of an intern candidate uh, for specifically structural engineering? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you want to have the core classes like steel and concrete. Um, it's been a really cool opportunity to be at University of Houston with you guys. That was fun. Um, and also get to, uh, you know, kind of interview people, mm -hmm. which is a new experience for me. So that's also also fun. You did a great on. job. Though. You did, <laughs> oh, no, yeah. you did great. <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, what we look for, you know, um, someone in an undergrad or a master's program for structural um, with just those classes that uh, are going to be directly applicable to what we're doing here every day. It's interesting to be on the other side of the table, you know, having to interview other interns uh, or interview interns for uh, when you were per perhaps just an intern not that long ago in the last <laughs> couple of years or so or three or four years, depending you know, how long you've been in the industry. It, it is a, uh, a new experience for, for many graduate engineers. <laughs> and it, it, it's a, it's a necessary skill for sure. It, it gives you context for, you know, you know, your position and the, the culture of the company. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to actually articulate and uh, impress upon people, you know, why we do things the, the way we do and how the, the company runs on a day base, daily basis here. So it, it's definitely interesting. Um, and, 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 and you're doing a great job, of course, at the career fair, you're, you're, you're definitely great at that point too. So <laughs> what was, what was the weirdest question that one of the students asked at the career fair? The weirdest question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the only question I can think of, I did get a lot of questions about whether or not, um, you know, if people are thinking about going to structural, if they should, you know, get their master's. And I def I, Definitely would say yes at this point. Right. Um, but I don't know about the weirdest <laughs> question. <laughs> they're all, they're all so nervous and you see them over there in the corner, like practicing their, their elevator pitch. And <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I mean, I've it's kind of funny, that. but I, I know the feeling. I remember that feeling of just being terrified and talking to strangers all yeah. day and yeah, you know, your career might depend on it. But, sure. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's not schadenfreude. I think it's just knowing that, uh, you've been in that boat maybe not that long ago and, and feeling the empathy right. that is for that just, nervousness, that anxiety. You're just come sweating in their suits and just like uh -huh. a handful of resumes just i don't know it's always uncomfortable i think it's necessary for for uh, for not for just for the firm but also for students like you you have to get out to those career fairs and just talk to people in the industry because you, you don't understand uh your school your classes aren't going to give you an opportunity to understand what uh, the industry is like at all i mean you get into your first job as an intern or your first job out of, out of school and it's just a completely new experience you yeah. have to relearn so much and, and you you finally understand like oh that's why that professor taught me that thing <laughs> just, yeah they didn't make it seem like it was practical at all. And now there is a practical use for it. Interesting. You know, now I get to start this entire new career. So, you know, we, we definitely look for those sorts of folk that, uh, you know, even if you are nervous at the career fair, you know, we, we, we want you to talk to us. We want you to, um, find out more about us, find out more about the, your, you know, your future career in general, even if it isn't with us technically, or, you know, if you have a separate, uh, career goal in mind, we want you to have uh, awareness of what, you know, what you're looking for in your, your future 
career, um, whether it be civil, structural, MEP, whatever, you know, it, it's, it's uh, very important to get at that grasp uh, early on. So, so going into uh, the path of a structural engineer, uh, so there's, there's multiple layers to that. I always see you get your graduate degree. Um, you can pursue, you get your EIT after college. Uh, you take your fundamentals of engineering exam, just like everybody else. After that, you pursue your PE, but there's also additional structural engineering licensure after that. Can you describe what that path looks like for a structural engineer? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, for me, um, undergrad, master's, uh, EIT, and then after a couple years taking the PE exam, which I will be doing shortly. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, for structural engineering, there's also um, something called the SE, so the structural engineering exam. It is a uh, very difficult exam. I've heard um, I have not taken it, um, but it is a 16-hour exam. It is split into two different parts. Um, uh, the first part is gravity, and the second part is lateral. And you do not have to take both of them at the same time, luckily. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> so uh, you can you can take the first part, gravity, pass it, and then once you do that, um, the next time they offer it, you can take the second part. Oh, great. That's kind of similar to how architecture licensure works, where they have multiple tests, but they're not all done at the same time. Oh, okay. That's, 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 uh, whereas PE is all done one day, is it eight hours? Eight hours, eight hours yeah. yeah. And, and it, I haven't taken mine yet. You can probably tell. <laughs> I'm scheduled to take it in April, so good luck, you know. Hey, good I'll be with you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we'll just perhaps be in the same boat and yeah. <laughs> study together. But um, yeah, the, 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 that's, that's, that's fortunate that a 16-hour test isn't all together I one can't time. imagine doing two days in a row of that. That's oh no. that is a uh, an arduous task of the lifetime, I think, for sure. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, do folks do you have to have your PE to get your SE? Is that a requirement to get to the SE level? No, if you if you want, you can actually take the SE first. Okay, and take the PE later, but uh, they're independent of each other. You don't have to have one to have the other. Okay, cool. Can you can you go into the details of the different differentiation between the two? As far as an SE, you don't necessarily need to have your SE to be able to sign and seal plans. Is that correct? It depends. So to sign and seal, you're going to need your PE. Of course. Yeah. And then there are a couple different states, um, such as California, for example, with the high seismic area, mm -hmm. uh, the high seismic in the that state, um, they do require an SE to sign those drawings. Okay. So there's certain use cases where the design necessitates an SE. Yes. Um, but in generally speaking, without you know hurricane loading or excessive snow loading, things like that, or seismic for that matter, the SE isn't necessarily a requirement for for most structures. I'm, I'm speaking from ignorance here. Actually, I'm actually entirely curious. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely not required. Um, but some people want to take that 16 hour exam and mm -hmm. yeah. and, and get it. Yeah. No, no, you can officially say I am an SE, a structural yeah. engineer, licensed by you know by any board that you can recognize. So that's that's a uh, Important for sure for your career. I think at some point, if you're instructional, you'd want to take it at some point, but uh, it's an intense test to take for yeah. sure. I'm just trying to get through the PE first. <laughs> yeah. One step at a time. Yeah, one step. So have you ever considered um, in any other division of civil engineering? Is there something else that picked your interest as well besides structural that while you were taking classes? Um, Not really, to be honest. Uh, I just really liked the... The structural classes, um, I, I did like geotechnical classes as well, <laughs> yeah, but, um, I guess it goes I, hand in hand with Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but no, not really. I, I've always loved math and, um, art. So I thought might as well be a structural engineer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, you get to, you get to work with architects and you get to build, uh, you know, the built landscape around your community that, that, that's a definitely, you know, a point of pride to go up to a structure and say, I helped design this and I helped make sure that this structure is resilient and sound for any of its occupants. So it's definitely a pretty cool feeling to get when you help with a project like that, that, that uh, impacts your community, impacts the, you know, the landscape around you for sure. Yeah, definitely. Especially, you know, if, if you get to go and actually see it, it's, it's a pretty cool feeling to be able to say that you worked on, on yeah. that project, that structure. So for sure. That's it's such a common thread in this, in this company, in this industry, or even, you know, architecture, engineering, construction, um, just being able to drive by a building and point at it and be like, <laughs> you know, I, I worked a year of my life on that project yeah. and, you know, <laughs> you know, perhaps too much about that building that you're pointing out, but yeah. hopefully it's going to be there for a long time and you can point at, you know, show your kids. And <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, my, my kids aren't old enough to, uh, 
be, uh, you know, have an opinion about it yet, but I'm sure they'll be like, oh, okay, dad, whatever. But you know, they'll, I'm sure they'll be proud. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'll be proud at least and, and continue pointing at it for sure. It's, it's almost a surreal feeling to be able to see it in, in reality after you've designed it and modeled it for sure. Uh, do you have any projects that stick out in your mind as far as, um, projects that you're really proud to work on or, or have, I know you've been here for a short while, but in just in general projects that you've worked on in the past that, um, perhaps had a, a bigger impact on you in seeing them constructed or, you know, fit, seeing them complete. Yeah, there was, um, there was a large school I worked on, uh, before this, um, and I got to actually go out to all the site visits. So, you know, just getting to s do the project from start to finish, uh, you know, you see it on paper and you don't think it's that large. And then you get out there and you start to see some of the beams and the columns and <laughs> the actual size of the entire building. And it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I can amend. Yeah. yeah. So I would say that that, uh, building is especially special. Definitely. I mean, you, you're, you probably don't think about it when you're in high school yourself, but like you're designing something that somebody is going to spend probably the most formative four years of their life almost <laughs> as a teenager. Like you think about your high school and think about all the intricacies of it or something and like all the little tiny nooks and crannies that you're like, why did they design it like this? I don't understand it. You know, <laughs> I, I, th I thought about that from some of the schools that we've done, uh, you know, like we're designing something that will be a very vivid memory for some people from middle school, high school, whatever it is. You know, you, you remember, you tend to remember your school and the, the layout because that's basically your, your domain while you're in, you know, while you're a teenager or, or, or an adolescent. So to think that you're designing that for somebody, it's, uh, I think that, that, that impacts me at least to, to notice that, um, you know, at the end of the day. All right. Well, so it's, uh, it's kind of switching gears, um, uh, toward the end of each episode, we kind of discuss, uh, what folks, you know, for folks personal life a bit and, you know, see what they do in their personal time and their time off. Anything that you like to do as a hobby, places you like to travel, things you like to do with your friends and family, uh, generally around Houston and Sugarland or, or beyond, of course, I know you've, you've traveled. Sure. So, yeah, I definitely, uh, I love traveling internationally. That's always, that's always fun to do. Um, I have a dog, so I like to, you know, take her for a walk, do fun stuff like that. Um, I like to work out when I have time <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, cook and pretty much just relax when I'm not working. Have you brought your dog to the office on Friday yet? No, not yet. She goes to daycare though, so. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Yes. We have a couple of folks who've been bringing their, their new puppies into the uh, Houston office. So that's been interesting seeing uh, puppies interact with the environment. <laughs> They're very, very energetic, but it's uh, it's definitely nice uh, way to end the week. You get uh, a little bit of re relaxation from having a, a an energetic you know, animal around the office. It's for, <laughs> yeah, that's It kind fun. of break, breaks up the, uh, the typical day-to-day -day a bit, so. It'd be interesting if you come to the Houston office on a Friday, definitely bring her around so we can. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Correct. The Austin office, it feels like a doggy daycare already <laughs> sometimes. It's just the, That's what I've heard. The amount of animals there. It's, it's, a, it's incredible every time I see yeah, it. So. I can't bring my dog anymore. He's way too energetic and it would just be a disruption to everyone. He would go <laughs> run around and like try to say hi to everyone. So <laughs> leave him at home. Yeah. We still got to get work done on Friday too. That's so. right. Uh, but cool. Cool. So uh, how long have you been back in Houston? Uh, you've, you, you, uh, after you graduated? at SMU, I'm assuming you came straight back to Houston? Yeah, I came back to Houston. So um, 2014, I graduated with my master's. Okay. So you've yeah. been in Houston for, uh, for a little while too. Um, cool. So I, I guess uh, we go, we're going to go into our, our uh, hot seat questions. We, we ask these three questions of everybody at the end of our each and every episode. Uh, so first question is, if you were to contribute a book to the Big Red Dog Library, perhaps we had a virtual library uh, that you could add, add a book to the shelf, what would that be and why? Um, you know, I think it would be just some of my textbooks. <laughs> I have so many, actually. Um, for example, right now I'm uh, learning PT, so post-tensioning concrete uh -huh. design. So I guess I would add that just because it's really interesting. And uh, that way other people could, could use it as a reference when they're learning too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's a good addition to an engineering library. For sure. Yeah. Um, so the second question is, uh, if perhaps Big Red Dog didn't exist and you weren't a structural engineer, couldn't do that you know, in the future, what would you do to chase your passions? Um, I would definitely, um, try to go into, um, saving animals. Um, I have a passion for dogs, so, uh, definitely, definitely try to do something with that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're well, yeah. in the right firm for that. I <laughs> yeah, guess, I know, too. right. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say surfing. No, I gave up on that <laughs> uh, a yeah. while back. <laughs> you could surf and save dogs. That's true. Or save surfing dogs, perhaps. Yeah, I could and teach those dogs how to surf. <laughs> yes, that's it. Surfing there dog there rescue. You go. Surfing dog foster home for the dogs who want to surf. I mean, I think there's a I think there's a market for that. <laughs> there's a market, yeah. For sure. I think we can work on that. 
Um, and the last question touches on our mission statement. Uh, to, what does it mean to you to make the engineering business cool? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just working at Bigger Dog has been awesome and the environment and the people, every, everything's um, open. Everybody's sitting out there together. Uh, so just the work environment, um, just being able to ask questions, you know, um, at any time, it's just been really cool. So great. That. That's a great answer. Thank you. Uh, well, Bailey, I appreciate you sitting down with us today and, and uh, really appreciate uh, you being the first Sugarland employee on the, <laughs> on the podcast. And it's a good excuse for me to get down here and Kelly to get down here That's too. Right. First structural person? person first too. structural yeah. engineering person yeah. as well. Yeah. Represent. Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. We're, we made, I think we've, we've hit the entire map now. Uh, we, we've hit HR, uh, marketing's already here. So it, it, yep. it kind of accounting, we'll civil, structural, MEP. Yeah. And traffic and transportation. That's right. Already hit, so. Uh, and they got the executive leadership with Will in the beginning. So we're, I think we, I think we've come full circle. Now we can. Now what do we do? Now, yeah. we, now we go down a depth chart and start, uh, start uh, talking to everybody in another hundred episodes. So, uh, but I appreciate it. Thank you for, for having us. Yeah. So, thanks for talking to me. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, that does it for another episode of Unleashed. Uh, as always, you can find our podcast uh, show notes at www.bigreddog.com slash podcast. So you can find us on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Play, any storefront that carries podcasts. And if you could leave us a review or a rating in one of those storefronts, we'd really appreciate it. And of course, find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media things. Probably a new one that came out and I don't even know about. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll create an account tonight and find us there too. <laughs> yeah, hit us up. We'll, we'll uh, we'd appreciate any questions you might have. Well, until next time, take care for now.